welcome to our review on the pH scale and neutralization. So the first thing we actually need to do is go back to basics. We need to know what we're talking about when we refer to an acid, an alkali and a neutral solution. So if we think about an acid, first of all, what you'd have learned back in key stage three, probably all the way back in year seven, is that acids have a pH of less than seven and that if we add universal indicator to them, then they go red, orange or yellow. In order to upgrade that slightly for GCSE, we do need to know what it means in terms of hydrogen ions. So an acid will release hydrogen ions when it's dissolved in water to make what's called an aqueous solution. For an alkali, if we think back to our key stage three, we know that they've got a pH of greater than seven. And that if we add universal indicator to them, then they go blue and purple. Now, one thing that we do need to know for our GCSE is that an alkali is a base that can dissolve in water. So all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis because there are some that will not dissolve in water. And when they dissolve in water, what we actually find is that they're going to release hydroxide ions, which are OH minus, and then they are what make it the alkali. So the last one is only going to be the same as we learned at key stage three on neutral solutions. They've got a pH of seven. And if we add universal indicator, they go green. So that's exactly the same as we learned all the way back in year seven. So at least there are some nice things that don't change. So hopefully we've all seen the pH scale before. Now this is obviously showing us the colors and the numbers associated. So the colors are what we see with universal indicator solution and the numbers are those actual values associated with the pH itself. So what we can see in the middle there, we've got that very clear green color and the pH seven, which is our neutral. As we move away towards the right, then we start off with the weak alkalis and then we get increasingly more alkaline until we get to the pH 14 on the far right hand side. Same thing happens going left, but with acids. So pH six is going to be a weak acid all the way down to pH zero, which is our strong acid. So the way you're probably used to measuring pH is by adding universal indicator solution to it and then trying to identify what color it actually is using a little color chart. Now, that's innately problematic because those colors never match the actual color chart. So there's a certain degree of guesswork going on. So one thing we can do to improve our technique of measuring the pH of a solution is to actually change the equipment. So as opposed to using universal indicator, we can use something called a pH meter. So in order to do this, what we'd actually do is first of all, we need to calibrate it. So you wash the pH probe with water and place it into this thing called a calibration buffer, which is basically a solution we know the pH of. Then what you do is there's a little screw on top of all the ones we tend to use in schools and you twist that round until the reading matches the pH of the buffer solution. You then rinse your probe with water again and place it in the test solution. And then you'll get a little digital reading on the screen, usually to two decimal places, that tells you the exact pH of that solution. One of the key reactions that you looked at all the way back in year seven when you did acids and alkalis was a neutralization reaction. Now that's just a reaction between an acid and a base or an alkali to form a neutral salt and water. So you've got the general word equation there, acid plus base makes a salt and water. If we now look at it in terms of our GCSE knowledge of what neutralization is, then we need to remember those additional bits of information about the acid and the alkali from earlier. Acids contain hydrogen ions, alkalis contain hydroxide ions. Now, hopefully when you're looking at those, you're thinking, hang on, there's two hydrogens, one oxygen, and the formula for water is H2O. So what we actually see happening are the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions react together and they form our water molecule. So you've got the equation there, H plus, and remember they're always aqueous, plus OH minus, also aqueous, makes our water, which is always represented by the liquid state symbol. Now, what we'll also find being made is a salt, which is made up from whatever other ions are present. 
So the way that we're actually going to work out what salt is made is by looking at two parts of our equation. So if you've got the word equation in front of you, and I've got one at the bottom of the screen there, then we can see we've got sodium hydroxide, which is our alkali, reacting with sulfuric acid, obviously the acid. We're going to make our salt, sodium sulfate, and water. Now, the way we actually know the name of that salt is by using the bits of information from our reactants. So the first part of the name of the salt is always the name of the metal in the base or the alkali. So in this case, our alkali is sodium hydroxide, the metal is sodium, so we write sodium down, and that's in green, as you can see. The second part of our salt name comes from the acid. Now, what you've got to do is learn that little bit of information in the table. So sulfuric acid will always make a salt that ends sulfate. So because we've got our sodium already written down and sulfuric acid is present, we write the word sulfate. So the salt is sodium sulfate. If it had been hydrochloric acid that was present, as you can see from the table, that always makes a chloride. So it would have been sodium chloride. If it was nitric acid, sodium nitrate, phosphoric acid, sodium phosphate. So you need to make sure that you've learned those four key acids and the type of salt made. So hydrochloric is a chloride, sulfuric is a sulfate, nitric a nitrate, and phosphoric a phosphate.